Hi there! Welcome to part two of my idea of swatching all of my Ranger Distress products in one place. <laughs> I have made myself um, this little thing here. This box here comes from Tim Holtz. This is really, really handy and I would like to have all of my Ranger Distress products swatched in this little space here. In my last video, I have shown you how I have made the base for such a little swatch, let's call it booklet, because it has several pages. I have shown you how I've made this first page here with the Distress Oxide ink pads. I've shown you how I've created this background, why I have put this circle and the butterfly and those splatters here. So if you have missed that, then please check out the info box. There's a whole playlist about my swatching videos. There you can find also other videos about swatching your uh, things in your craft room. Um, and there you will find part one of this little series here as well. Today, I would like to fill up the inside of each of those little booklets. And for these both pages, I want to use my Distress Oxide sprays and my spray stains. On the left side, there will go the Oxide spray and on the right side, there will go the spray stain of each color. And I thought, how can I manage that? Because in my last video, I have told you if you want to do such a swatch thing for yourself as well, then please think about the things that you are using in your normal artsy life as well yeah so i have thought about which paper am i using when i make a normal junk journal project if i want to create such a back background on a journaling card or a junk journal tag then i'm using in 99 percent of the uh, projects this kind of paper so this is just regular watercolor paper um and that's also the reason why I have used this for the base of my swatches. So I thought, what do I have to put to the inside here to get a really, really close impression of the oxide inks and the spray stains um, compared to the reality of my projects? So that means I had to think about which papers am I using for my junk journal projects so that I could can put pieces of that in here and spritz to those papers. You know, a junk journaler is using many different papers. We are using packaging paper. We are using things from the trash can. There can be some special handmade paper, for example, that soaks, for example, really much. Paper that is perhaps a little bit glossy and the ink is drying not so well and so on. You know, we are using so many different materials, so I had to choose some of those because it's not possible to put all of them into this little booklet. Yeah, that's a fact. So I thought about what am I using the most in my junk journal projects. The first thing that I'm using really often are book pages. And nearly all of my book pages are coffee dyed. So I have taken out some coffee dyed book pages and I've cut myself these little rectangles to put them here. So I want to divide each of those pages here into four areas. And one of those will be uh, with these book pages here. Then I'm using coffee dyed paper, of course, really often. So this is just some regular copy paper that I have coffee dyed. And this is exactly the same size of rectangle like the book pages so that I can put pieces of those here to my booklet as well. And of course, I'm also often spritzing to this watercolor paper here. So that means one of those areas here will be just um, this paper. I have not cut out those rectangles again because the paper is already here. I can just spritz to the base. And then I came to um, the idea, or I, I've realized, that um, oxide sprays on dark surfaces look really different to white or light surfaces. So I've decided that I want to cut myself some black pieces as well. So these rectangles are just some black scrapbooking paper. 
and these I will only glue to the oxide page here of my swatch because spraying um, spray stains to dark backgrounds makes no sense because you wouldn't see it. You will see that in some seconds. So the first thing that I want to do now is I want to take, uh, let's go with the uh, coffee dyed paper first. I am going to need two pieces of the coffee dyed paper, one for the left side and one for the right side. So um, this first area here on the top left corner here and here will stay white and it will be my area for the watercolor paper. Then I'm taking the coffee dyed paper and I'm putting that to the right corner here on the top. One for the oxide spray here and one for the spray stain here. And I'm using bookbinders glue, by the way, to glue this to make sure that when I later on spritz the spray that the paper can't come off from the liquid medium. That was no sentence. That the car, that the paper can't come off from the base because of the liquid medium. I'm learning slowly, but I'm learning. <laughs> My goodness. So the book page pieces are going here to the left on the bottom, like this, and also one for the spray stain as well, like this, and the black card. Uh, scrapbooking paper goes only on the side of the to the side of the oxide spray so this goes here and the plan is to spritz later on to the middle of this page with the oxide spray and to the middle of this spray uh, page with the spray stain so that I get spray on each of those uh, little pieces <clears throat> that I have glued down here and then uh, when I have that for all of the colors, I can just close that up and put that here back into my little um, wooden thingy here and I can read the name here or I can realize I have uh, my color here and I can take that out and here I can then see the swatches of my sprays. <clears throat> I've realized, um, so um, perhaps this is the first video that you see of this series let me quickly explain how I have done this here so the other colors are already laying here because I've prepared all of the insides before starting recording yeah so here are the rest of my colors laying on the side they uh, can be held by this little wooden box in their order like they are there in my ink pad shelf so I have a special order for myself for my own orientation for my oxide ink pads and that's also the order that I've chosen to fill up this box with the swatches when I go through those uh, colors now I realized that I have two oxide sprays where I don't have the oxide ink pad that means I'm going to need another thing like this for those both colors and those both colors are barn door and broken china <clears throat> so i have cut out this little label from the ranger uh, download sheet thingy and i will put that here and this is just cool because now i of course can swatch my spray but <laughs> at the same time this is also really cool because uh, now I have this for broken china and as you can see that looks a little bit different here's nothing on the front because I don't have the oxide ink broken china it's not distressed because I don't have the oxide ink broken china yeah so when I now take this and I decide for the place where that shall go here uh, to the blues uh, in my um, row of sprays there on my shelf I have it next to Uncharted Mariner. I don't know if that's a good idea, if that belongs there. I have no idea, but let's put it here, uh, like it is in my shelf there as well. There on the side of my um, wall, there is a little shelf and there I have all of my inks, uh, my, my sprays. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. 
all of the spray bottles are next to each other in the same order like my ink pads and they're somewhere in between of those there's broken china and there's also barn door where i don't have uh, the ink pad as i said but i want to put these here into the order of course um, like i have them on my shelf otherwise that wouldn't make any sense and now uh, when this is filled up, so let me just take this out so that you can uh, have a better imagination. When everything is now filled up, I can exactly see uh, with this little edges here that I have two colors in here where I don't have the oxide ink pad because here is no distressing on the edges. So that makes it really easy to see. Can you see that? That is really cool. You can take it like this. And I can see, okay, I have broken china here. If I go through the blues, for example, I can think, okay, which uh, spray do I want to use? And I can immediately see I also have broken china because it's in here. And I have some mediums of that color. So I can take this swatch out and look inside of the little booklet which mediums I have. But I also immediately see that I don't have the oxide ink pad. If I one day get the oxide ink pad, I can just take this out, distress the edges and create this front page here for broken china as well in the same way like I did it on the others. And when I then put that back in here, I can see, okay, I have the ink pad and uh i mean i have the oxide ink pad and i um yeah can immediately see that because this frame then would be colored um i mean distressed with broken china uh another thing that i found out in the meantime that i quickly would like to mention if you see this video and if you think oh great idea i want to make this for myself as well then please 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 listen very carefully now because i made a really strange mistake or Actually, for me, it's no problem, but um, if you want to do it, please do it like I'm telling you now and not like I did it. <laughs> so you don't have to make the same mistakes like I did. So look at this. Uh, when it's on, when this little wooden box is on my desk, I can look at it like this. It would be approximately like, like this, yeah, for, for my eyes. And then I can go through the single uh, things here and I can read the names here. And for me... It's easier to uh, read when the name starts here on the bottom and goes to the top. But in the meantime, I realized you could also take this whole thing and put it to your desk like this. Yeah, when you look on top of that, then it would look like this for you. And you could go through these little file folders like this and you could search for the right color or perhaps you also would take uh, would like to take them out and store them in another box like this to go through them like this and perhaps you want to stamp the butterfly in the other direction so that this whole thing makes sense like this then please 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 take those labels and glue them down in the other direction because as you can see now, when I hold it in my hands like this, this is upside down. If this would be the other way around so that you can read it here uh, normally, then it would be absolutely no problem if you have them in your hand like this, because then you can still read them, but they are coming from the top and going to the bottom and not like this is. Do you know what I mean? I'm really thinking about printing those labels out again and gluing them on top of those but the other way around so if you want to make that for yourself please don't make this mistake <laughs> so now i will go on and i will um prepare all of these inner parts of the little booklets for the rest of the colors that i have here and then we can go on with the next steps to fill this up then this the fun can begin i think <laughs> this um preparing this takes of course a little time uh but it's also really meditative and this is just fun to think about that to make um this like a little magic do you know what i mean i know when i have this finished 
this will become so helpful for my future projects. So every time I glue so those little pieces down or when I have cut them, I thought, oh, this takes so much time. But when I have it, I will be just happy. So <laughs> let me just finish up these and then we can go on with the swatching itself. Okay, so <clears throat> here we go. I have all of my little things here prepared with the papers glued to the inside so that we can now start the fun with the fun part of this thing. Um, so now I would like to spritz to the pages here with the both sprays. To don't mess up my table, I have just a little box here. I've just put some already uh, coffee dyed paper. Here is some old watercolor on top um, so that I don't waste my ink. When I now place the things in here, I can spritz without wasting too much ink because yeah, it will go to the paper and I will use those papers that are here on the bottom for my junk journals so that I can dye them and make them a little bit more interesting at the same time. The first color would be black suit, but I don't have black suit oxide spray and I don't have black suit spray stain. That means the inside of this thing for now will stay empty and this will go into my little box here as it is because I don't have the spray. The next color is hickory smoke. That looks a little bit better because <laughs> I have the hickory smoke oxide spray. So that means we are going to take out the spray. And now of course I have the problem I want to spritz only to this area here so we have to put something else here. But that's really easy. So I'm just taking this paper, folding that in half, and then I'm covering that up there. And now I'm trying to spritz to the middle um, so that I get uh, some of the spray to the white area, some of the spray to the coffee dyed paper, some to the book page, and some to the black scrapbooking paper oh. um, and then I will let this dry the next color in my row of oxides is freight burlap uh, yeah so I'm always thinking that I have the freight burlap spray but now I'm looking there to my shelf and I don't have it. <laughs> it's not there. I don't have it. So this goes um, into my box like it is. <clears throat> the next one is ground espresso. This, that should be available. <laughs> and there I have the oxide spray and the spray stain. Then I'm taking this off and now I'm drying this so that I'm able to take my protection paper and put that here to the other side to spray the spray stain now. And I want to add some water here so I want to have the comparison to here on the white paper where no water is only the spray and here I want to add some water to to be able to compare that directly like this perfect and then we can go on with the next color that is walnut stain
Ta-da! <laughs> I'm so happy. So these are now <clears throat> all of my oxide sprays and spray stains swatched to those little cards. And if these were junk journal tags or journaling cards or any other project where I would use those sprays, then I would probably now, when this is dry, take some water and spritz a little bit um, to each, uh, not to each, to, to my project, to the uh, area where the spray is. And that's what I'm going to do next. I will take my water spritz bottle and then I will spritz here and there um, to get an imagination how the sprays will look when water was added. And additionally, I'm going to take a paper towel to get rid of the ink that will be reactivated with the water. That's what I would do in reality with a normal project as well. Okay, so here we go when this is totally dry it looks like this and I would like to go through the single colors really quickly so that you can see what it looks like now when it's really totally dry uh, with some of the colors it's really 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 impressive how differently those sprays look I mean you can expect that yeah that's the oxide spray and that's the spray stain of ground espresso for example but when you can compare that directly with each other like on this swatch then it's eye-opening do you know what i mean it's uh really crazy uh to see those compared to each other and especially when you don't know which effect you would like to have on your page later or on your junk journal tag then you can just grab your swatch and you can see which one you would like better because you can compare them to each other and of course you could also take this and fold it like so and then put that to your page to get this out of your eye and see if this would work on your page you could also take um, for example a paper where you think uh, can I put such a color to the paper and you can just do it like this and see if the colors would work together of course it would work the other way around as well look if that would work if you would use one of these uh, four papers here in combination with the scrapbooking paper for example that you've chosen or whatever you have there on your page I think that is really great <laughs> and I'm really really happy that I have done this and I guess I've realized that my soul is brushed corduroy <laughs> when I spritzed this here I thought it again I mean this color is such an amazing color all of these different shades are so cool and if you would like to compare the oxide spray here to what we've done here with the ink pad, I mean, that is just crazy, isn't it? So different and also so matching. Fascinating. That's just fascinating for me. And especially white honey, look how different that looks on the different surfaces. I mean, that's just crazy. And I'm so happy that I've put those different papers here. For example, here, antique linen. Can you see this nearly yellowish uh, shade here? Nothing of that is on the book page and nothing of that is on the coffee dyed paper. And that is so good to know for me. I mean, there could be a project where I want this effect and perhaps I have a book page or coffee dyed paper or a black 
uh, scrapbooking paper and I spritz to that and I get only this, yeah, let's say base color of the antique linen, but not this effect. How sad would that be? How good is it to know that before you spritz? I mean, I can just grab this little thingy and look how the color will come out. Forest moss is also such a color where I think, what the heck? I mean, forest moss is, is absolutely amazing, but look how different. Here on the uh, watercolor paper, it looks like rust in between of this uh, darker splatters. Here it's like moss. There it's like sun is shining to the moss. Absolutely crazy. And also um, that the color, the ink is bleeding on the coffee dyed paper really extremely in some cases. I guess that depends on how much coffee you have used to dye the paper. But these little flowers, I always call them flowers because those look like little flowers. Um, this effect is so great, but so uncontrollable at the same time. And it's really cool to see that here on this tiny paper. I mean, that is not a full impression of this whole thing. Yeah, it's only a swatch that can turn out so different when you uh, put that to your actual page. I mean, I don't have the same coffee dyed papers everywhere in my journals, but I get an imagination of how this will turn out that this gets really greenish turquoise for example with the salvage patina compared to the book page it gets really bluish turquoise and that's of course really helpful to know when you uh, want to put that to a project you get yeah approximately what you have here do you know what i mean it's, it's of course, it can't be exactly the same like here, but um, this is just so helpful. <sighs> and Uncharted Mariner. I mean, what the heck? I think Ranger and Tim Holtz have outdone themselves with this color. This is just so amazing. You can do so many different things with that. <sighs> so versatile and it's so so unique i mean this bluish turquoise turquoiseish blue <laughs> everyone sees it a little bit different i guess this is such a great color for so many different uh, projects just gorgeous and the difference between the oxide spray and the spray stain here is really extremely i would say and they also match each other so well ah, great Yeah, so uh, now we have this <laughs> and um, the next thing that I want to do is I would like to um, swatch the rest of my mediums on each of the back sides of these little booklets. That means we still have left over um, the refillers that I have for the oxide ink pads and for the normal ink pads. Um, the Distress Ink refillers are only five, if I count right at the moment. The Oxide refillers are a few more that I have, because I often use those also for some mixed media techniques and not only for refilling my ink pads. Um, so these will go somehow to the back. And then we also have left over the Distress Paints. I, I got a few of those on an online flea market. I bought them secondhand because I wanted to try them out and then I fall in love with them and now I have them. <laughs> and of course I want to have them on my swatches as well. And we also have left over the Distress um, pow um, here embossing powders and glazes. And that's what I want to swatch to the backside. And that's what you will see in my upcoming videos. I don't know until now um, if I will swatch the whole backside with all of the mediums that, that I've just mentioned in the one video in the next one or if I need two videos to do that. I'm, I'm not totally sure about that. I have to decide that while I'm doing that. But um, you will find all of the videos, um, all of those swatch videos in the playlist linked below so that you can catch up what you perhaps have missed. I will now put this here back into my little wooden box here into the right order in between of these where I don't have the sprays. 
and then this will be ah, such a treasure. <laughs> So here we go. <laughs> this is so awesome. This is just so awesome. I am so in love with this. So that's it from me for now. See you the next time. Stay creative and have fun with your own swatches. Bye bye.